She started from making one table to serving hundreds of clients. Today, we meet Aida Gaki, the founder of Kwetu Decor and Designs. This is Founders Connect Africa. So thank you so much, Aida, for having us at Kwetu. This great premises. I'm loving the entire decor about this place. Um, tell us, how did Kwetu start? Kwetu is a social enterprise. Uh, it trains, uh, it started like just a hobby, but then it grew into something else, which is a business now. Uh, but we just started like uh, something you're just passionate about. Uh -huh. yeah. What were you passionate about? I was passionate about uh, recycling and art. So that's how I started making the nice things that you can see around here. Yes. All right, so um, tell us, I can see tables. I can see a bit of chairs. Um, what do you make here exactly? We make uh, mostly uh, anything interior. We concentrate with that. We make coffee tables, we make uh, poofs, we make stools, we make wall hanging, we make mirrors. Uh, anything interior, sort of an interior piece. We try to come up with it. Yeah. How long has you been doing this? Three years now. Three years? Yes. Okay. So what do you use in terms of making? I can see very different things. I can see a lot of uh, Africanness, if you can tell us. Yes, so we use a lot of uh, ethical products, well, ethical materials. We use a lot of uh, sisal, which is ethical. We get it from Ukamani. We use uh, water hyacinth from uh, Lake Victoria, from Kisumu. We get the women to eat the dead bread, which we in the end, we use the thread to just do the, I mean, the rope to do the coffee tables. We also work a lot with African fabrics, which we just source around. Lots of them in Eastly, town. So we just source different fabrics. Yes, so most of the materials that we use are just products, I mean, materials that are eco-friendly, which means they are ethical, they are, you know, environmental friendly. Very yes. And yes. Is that also... He, that was the ethical yes, that was that was the, the other part of it yeah. because we want to uh, ensure that we are all environmental conscious. Uh -huh. So we are trying to go green in a way, uh -huh. making sure that we are, we are using as much as ethical uh, materials as much as possible. Okay. Yes. So I see a lot of, um, have you said ethical materials? Did you spend a lot when you were starting? Actually not, because um, I was initially I was just experimenting. It's not anything that I knew how to go about. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you actually go to my page right now, you go scroll to the first product that mm -hmm. we ever made. You'd be surprised how <laughs> far we've come. Yeah. Yes, because it's it's something you're just trying out. Mm -hmm. You don't know how it's gonna come out. Mm -hmm. You just doing your research online. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like someone taught you how to do it. Mm -hmm. So you put two and two together. You see they're working together then the next time you try to improve make it better next time and then i think over the years we get a lot of people who want something different you know they tell you can you do this with this so it's something that uh, like most of our products we develop them over time because someone comes and say can you make this and we make because we just have to be uh, as creative as possible yeah yeah tell me how how was your first sale my first sale was, uh, it was, it was something out of this world. Like, you're not even sure what you're selling is, is, is something that people are going to appreciate. Yeah. This is a product that is locally made. So people are not sure if they're going to buy it, it's going to last. So my first product, actually, I delivered it myself to the client and she was happy. It was a colored, I remember very well. Uh, a size all colored red coffee table and we used to use this one using glass but then I used to use mirrors I didn't know even how to attach the glass so I had to think of how to attach the mirror because now you can't see the mirror on that side so if you put glue on the mirror on this other side it's so you you will not see the glue so but now uh, we've come up with a way of now attaching the glass to the to the plywood which is now we can use actual glass but then I was using the mirror because the mirror on top on the back side you can't you can't see the other side so even if you do glue and then you attach it to the plywood you'll not you'll not see the glue 
So that was the first piece I delivered and the client was, I think I fetched 5,500, which was good money. I mean, like, because I had not invested much apart from just the idea. So it was, it was, and that's how I came to realize that you can actually sell the product. People appreciate it because I started with just a page, a Facebook page, and that's how now people started knowing our products and referrals, like you sell to a sister, another sister wants, just like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So after now you've started, um, you've said it's a social enterprise. Yeah. What does that mean? It's it's basically uh, how to train, how to work and train women. So that was the major idea when I started. I want to work with women. I want to train women how to make these pieces. They either become their own entrepreneurs, they, they can sell the products, can have the knowledge and start their own enterprises, or we can help them market the products. So we, very soon, I think we had to slow down because of COVID, because we had a strategy of now training more women. I mean, coming up with a, 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 like a training, uh, plan for training a group of women but now with COVID we slowed down but now we are coming up in the next two months we should have a strategy on how to go about it how to get more women involved. I'm very interested with this high thing that you're using um, for your products um, and we've seen a lot of problems in, in, in Kisumu and in Lake Victoria people saying that this is a very bad um, thing that is affecting the lake. The lake yeah. um, how are you using it? It's very interesting that you're using it and how is the product being picked up? Yeah, the product is actually picking up very well. People are loving the product because it's um, it's natural and we, if you want something very calm, very uh, not very, I mean those people don't like shouting colors because we've had people go red, green, you know, especially when you're working with size of, but people want something very rustic and very natural, they go for the higher sin because um, it's natural. And how the women, in, we, I work with a group of women uh, uh, in Lake Victoria, they just get the, the reeds from the lake, dry it, and then they weave the, the, this, the thread. So they send us the threads of, now the ropes, the ropes, uh, it's like a five meter rope, which they send, they, they sell. I actually buy it from, from the women and then I use it now to make the products. So I have a line of hyacinth products. It's the coffee table, the side stool, wall hangings and mirrors. So we have like three lines whereby we have the water hyacinth products, we have the African fabric products, and then we have the size all products. Yes. How did you learn how to make this? Did you go to school? Was it just, uh, at least you had said that you had started with just not knowing. Yeah. Did you ever like go back and get education on how to tie the notes? Because this is some beautiful art. No, I think it was all about doing research, uh -huh. maybe online. Yeah. Uh, just uh, you trying to... yourself online? Yes, just looking at online, pin, Pinterest, so much yeah. stuff going on there. And I think for me, it's, it's this creativity that just comes just naturally because I can sleep at night and think tomorrow I'll just come up with this which is you know like I just thought about it like last night yeah. and, and I thought oh I can have something like a corner stand which will just have something which is just going to brighten your space you know it's it's just ideas that just come mm. yeah it's not and it's products that have developed over time mm. it's not like uh, it's I mean, it's stuff that come up over time. For example, if you look at that, this tissue holder, mm -hmm. it's just, so cute. It's, it's a box, yeah. it's a carton, yeah. you know? Oh. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh -huh. So when we say recycling, you're recycling yeah. Yeah, actually everything. So it's just a box, which I had a small piece of fabric at home that was left. After making an order, I was like, now what do I do with this? Pick a carton, just do a bit of uh, fabric on it. And then you just tie it with with with, uh, with hyacinth, and there you go. You have your tissue holder <laughs> in the house. It's so interesting. But what has been your biggest challenge through this? Yeah, I think our biggest challenge is the marketing. Mm -hmm. I mean, like uh, because still people don't appreciate what what has been made locally. They still feel they want to import stuff. They want to buy stuff in the mm -hmm. in the in the in the in the supermarkets mm -hmm. or hypermarkets. People want to buy 
cheap things because you can imagine the process that goes into making this. Yeah. So when someone comes and tells you because they feel it's just locally made, they want to buy it at like a throwaway price. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the marketing and people um, embracing locally made products. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that that has been one of our biggest challenge. So Kenyans are it's not penetrating that market. Yeah. Yeah, but we are getting there because we are getting a lot of people now embracing the African art. Mm -hmm. We are getting so many people want to change their houses into into African themed houses. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's working out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a growth process. It's a growth say. process, yes, I would say that. Okay. So where yeah. do you see Kwetu in the next five years? I would see Kwetu being we have different hubs like franchises of Kwetu. We have Kwetu Mombasa, Kwetu Kisumu, Kwetu Meru, Kwetu Uganda, Kwetu Zimbabwe, Kwetu you know, Kwetu yeah. South Africa. Yes. We we want to be our presence to be felt everywhere because this is Africa. Women go through the same thing. You know, women uh, they want to put to put food on on their family's table. So it's it's an African uh, thing. I mean, we we can all support the women. So it doesn't matter where you are. So you can be in Kuwait. I mean, like in Nigeria. You know, it can be everywhere. You can you can have Kuwait too everywhere because it's all about empowering the women. Yes. Oh, interesting. So. What would be your advice to young people out there who are differently? Because we've seen a lot of young people lost their jobs. What would yeah. be your advice to people who I think I would, don't I would, have? Yeah, I would really tell people it's 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 just having that 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 um, what do you call it? You you just to feel like you you want to do something because this what we started with is, is nothing. I mean it's just having that you just feel like you want to do something and explore there are so many platforms i mean the internet in kenya is not that expensive you know instead of just you know uh, social media there's so much you can learn even online just go do something start something yeah just talk to people you know like we can help as we have already started we can help out how as much as we can you know so it's not all about capital you know, you just keep, can't keep on complaining and claiming that, oh, I don't have capital to start. Start with something, you know. I'll see something that you have. I like it. I will market it. You see, there are people who are good marketers, you know. Just come up with something. Just don't sit and wait for capital. Nice. It will take forever, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you, too. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you.